Hey everybody, my name is Mike Williams, uh, and today I'm going to talk to you about machine intelligence and political campaigns. Now, by uh, show of applause, who's ready for the election to be over next Tuesday? <laughs> and that's why I'm talking about it, because I think uh, while this election cycle is going to be over, machine intelligence, as incorporated within political campaigns, is going to be with us for a long time. That may scare some of you. So let's talk about exactly what that means. Um, first of all, baseline, what is a campaign? A good way to think about it is a very large, very well-funded, uh, and very fast-moving startup. I mean, they are good at what they do, and they do the full range of what any other enterprise uh, that you can imagine is doing. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was a funny way to introduce ourselves to some of the technology that these campaigns are doing. I think some of you have already seen this. When you console log the websites of our two presidential candidates, the first one, uh, Secretary Clinton up front, she has a great little advertisement for developers, come join the campaign. When you do the same for uh, Mr. Trump, you get over 500 console log errors on his landing page. So <laughs> there is a discrepancy. Not all campaigns uh, are born the same. Now, software is eating the world. Everybody's heard this Mark Andreessen sort of turn of phrase. Software has eaten campaigns. This has been around for a while. This is not new. Uh, I think anecdotally, people have probably heard that Obama for America back in 08 really revolutionized a lot of this. Howard Dean, even before him, led the way on some of these technologies. Uh, and then the Republicans caught up with Mitt Romney's campaign. Now both sides really have sort of a quality of arms. It's just which ones choose to use it. And again, uh, this is not a politically biased presentation, but uh, I'm in the tank for Hillary. So uh, <laughs> machine intelligence, uh, it, it's my terminology for the same thing that everybody uses. And I shouldn't say it's mine as if I created it. It's just how I refer to machine learning or artificial intelligence. It's all the same thing. People call it by different names. Uh, these categories, the sort of five tribes, uh, are from Pedro Domingos, who's a great uh, machine learning, uh, machine intelligence professor in the University of Washington. Those aren't his definitions. That's just how I think very simply about these five tribes. Um, and the one that we're going to talk about is Bayesian. Uh, so the very first one, which is really just probabilities. Easy way to think about it. We're going to be talking about probabilities. Now, why are we talking about probabilities? Because even though Thomas Bayes was an English pastor from the 18th century who didn't even publish his theorem while he was alive, this is now incorporated into most of the machine learning applications that are used today, especially in analytic uh, tools. And that is, of course, what campaigns want to take advantage of. Um, very simple rule. I think it's self-explanatory to everybody here. Everybody's really smart. And then in the machine learning context, you can think about it as, OK, if we're going to try to figure out uh, all these gaps in our data to predict certain values within uh, that, that missing information, we need to model it. And then we need to use various probabilities and ways to uh, really improve or optimize uh, those probabilities to make predictions, uh, to tell the future. Uh, although a lot of folks would probably say telling the future is not a good way to think about this because most of these problems are NP uh, complete hard, which means that we are never going to perfectly solve them, uh, although we're not going to talk too much about that today. So uh, where's the learning? You know, small data, you know, the scarcity of data is a big problem. But with you know, improvements in storage and, and software to access that storage in quick time, uh, we are now in a big data environment. And that's when machine learning really thrives, because that's when you can optimize. That's when you can move through a network uh, and improve your results uh, through gradations of uh, error improvement, as in lowering your error. And now to really simplify a Bayesian network, to think about it simply, uh, I, you know, it's a, an extremely long uh, and difficult definition, but think about a graph of connected 
yet independent conditional probabilities. And you're sort of following the topography of, of that graph. And then for optimization, again, I mentioned this already, it's error improvement. I like to uh, reference Monte Carlo Markov chain uh, just because it's funny to me that they named it after Monte Carlo because Monte Carlo in that terminology just means random and Monte Carlo is a great casino town and that's literally why it's called that. Markov chain just being a, a sequence of steps. Uh, and MCMC, as many people don't know, was helpful in developing the uh, atomic bomb back in the Manhattan Project. And now we're using it for machine learning. So back to politics. Um, you know, what, again, are the functions of this campaign? What is it achieving? Uh, what is it hoping to do with the machine intelligence? Win the campaign, of course. Get more votes. So there's messaging. We have some of the spokespeople for the various campaigns, as well as Alec Baldwin playing Donald Trump for fun. Uh, and the map, which is extremely important for a variety of reasons. Where do you send your staff? Where do you send your volunteers? Where do you send your candidate? Uh, and you know, one of the candidates up there. And then micro-targeted messaging. You see a, a telephone call center. Everybody's got laptops in front of them. Uh, people out there canvassing neighborhoods. You could bring a tablet. You can access your campaign database. You can both receive uh, output from that database and input it. And that's important too because the more you can either confirm or deny the predictions that are being provided to you by that campaign software, the better that model is going to be. So what's under the hood of Bayesian uh, machine learning in, as applied to uh, these analytic applications? Well, a lot of it, and not all of it, there's so many flavors, but a lot of it and the one that I'm going to demo a little bit later on is really just uh, matrix factorization. And it's super simple. You know, here's our graph of known values as blue and missing values as the gaps in between. We just need to create two random matrices, um, dot multiply them together, and then fill in uh, all those missing values. Now, it's easier, of course, the way I say it than it really is, but with the power of computation and the power of big data, you can go through random combinations of these matrices. Again, the Monte Carlo part of that Monte Carlo uh, uh, method and reduce your error over time. And this is something that was already spoken about today, um, but gradient descent is a way to, to help that. Now, in this particular example, we're going to use stochastic gradient descent, which simply means that rather than check the error of that whole matrix multiplication, we're just going to check the error of a single value. So it's a lot quicker, but it also takes a little bit longer to get to that right answer, which we show here as, you know, in th that's really a picture of a global minimum, but you could also arrive at a local minimum. It's really hard to know uh, exactly when you found your most optimized solution. Uh, and here you can see it's stochastic because it's a little bit choppy. Um, if it was a lot more smooth, if they were checking the error of the whole uh, uh, model every single time, uh, it would be a lot more smooth. So let's pseudocode. I, I, I didn't create real code. This could go on for a very long time uh, and be a, a very hard, difficult to explain, but really we're starting with an input matrix. Uh, we are, uh, to, to make the matrix multiplication work, having one matrix uh, with the uh, row length uh, the same and then the other matrix with the column length of that input as its row length. We're using some weights which are going to help the model learn. This is your so-called optimization or learning. Uh, and then we're going to generate these random matrices uh, with those weights uh, and then try to find convergence. And that's going to be a recursive function where you're just going to keep pounding through this factorization until you're reducing uh, that error towards that minimum. Again, the gradient descent stepping further and further towards your most optimized model. 
And then at the conclusion, you're just going to fill in the blanks. It's really that simple in pseudocode. It is certainly not that simple in reality. Uh, now, <laughs> I didn't want to live code or even live demo in front of you guys. So what I've done here is a screencast of a little application I built. Um, and I didn't, uh, <laughs> I should note, this is not populated with 5 million or 500 million rows of data like an actual uh, machine learning model would be. I put in 500 rows of fake data. So <laughs> the value error is kind of high. We're not going to talk about that. But just to give you a, a taste of what, uh, what might happen here. So you can imagine being in a phone bank, uh, for instance, and using this uh, to type in a voter ID that you are now set to call. You're going to get that person's information, uh, their bio data, as well as what is known from social media, from voter registration files, from surveys, what have you, about their interests and how they feel you know, from zero to four about a particular issue. Then you can predict. And here we used just that pseudocode um, to create um, those predictions. Uh, you know, again, just showing it with a different voter. This person obviously likes guns and racial uh, injustice, which is an interesting mix, uh, <laughs> and not, uh, not really into education. Uh, so there you have it. That's just a, a brief taste of what is to come, really, because that's what this presentation is about. This is only going to get better, and it's only going to take up more of how these political campaigns are run. You can imagine this, for instance, being an automated tool where you're just feeding it into a, a bot that's sending out emails or Facebook advertisements or what have you, and it's going to micro-target you so well. And it's only going to get better as the data comes in. They have a longer record of how you feel about certain things, and the information becomes uh, better tuned through better modeling. Scary thought. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.